This is the cheapest brand new Porsche that money can buy, but can you actually get a genuine Porsche for under $85,000 before on-road costs here in Australia? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be critically looking at that question. I'm going to take no prisoners in this review of the base model 2022 Porsche Macan, which uses a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder petrol engine. If you're a subscriber to Chasing Cars, I encourage you to do so down below the video. You will have seen, I've already reviewed the fabulous 2022 Macan S, which uses the Audi RS4 engine, a 2.9 liter twin turbo petrol V6, which is really sparkling. But do you still get the magic when you go for an engine that you can get in a Volkswagen Golf? Well, we're gonna be finding out in today's independent review of the base model Porsche Macan. And this one's actually quite lightly optioned, 95 grand. I'll run you through what extras this vehicle has when we jump inside. After that, we'll check out the back seats and the boot. Back at the office, we'll have a look at fitting baby seats and how much you can really fit in the cargo area. And then we'll head out onto the road in the 2022 base model Macan to see how this thing drives compared to its rivals. Is it a real Porsche? We're gonna be finding out. All right, let's make a start. It's become a bit of a tradition in our reviews of Porsche vehicles here at Chasing Cars to read out the list of options so that we have full transparency because the options lists on Porsches are immense. That's not necessarily a criticism. These cars are very configurable. You can get them exactly how you want. But this car, which starts at $84,800, has on it the Volcano Grey paintwork outside, quite a pretty grey. That's $1,800. And then here inside, we have a panoramic sunroof for $3,110. It's got a Bose surround sound stereo for $2,220. LED headlights with PDLS Plus for $860. Seat heaters for $790. $650 for self-parking. $540 for Porsche courtesy lights in LED, which shine down onto the road at night. And $490 for Power Steering Plus, which is a variable steering ratio and that takes us up to $95,270. Now some of those things I think you could skip, uh, for instance the courtesy lights, but sunroof, I think a lot of people will want one of those on an SUV like this, and the Bose as well. Not the best stereo I've ever heard, but definitely a step up from the base unit on the Macan, so it's probably a box I would tick. But pretty much everything else you see here is standard and the Macan is really nicely trimmed, even in a conservative specification like this. No doubt in my mind, this is a step up from something like an Audi Q5, which sits on the same platform, the Volkswagen MLB chassis as this vehicle. Everything feels higher end in here from the leather on the steering wheel to the real metal paddle shifters, which are cold to the touch, to the soft materials on the center console, to the seats, which are fantastic. These are the standard seats, the 14-way seat. The 18-way seat is a relatively inexpensive upgrade, but they are even more comfortable, particularly if you have a narrow frame because you can adjust the side bolsters and a bunch of other things. But the 14-way, slightly better for larger frames, still really comfortable, and you can get a whole bunch of leather colors in this car. We've got the black here, perforated with seat heaters, and it looks nice, it looks pretty classy. Here in the center, we've got a touchscreen, a wide touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That works well. I just wish the smartphone mirroring actually took up the whole screen, because for some reason there's this little block that you can't, you just can't change that, which is kind of annoying. Now ahead of the driver, we've got analog dials, which are really handsome. I love the fact Porsche have kept these. You do have a digital speedo, and then you've got a colored screen to the right, and that's where you can cycle through your map, your audio, trip computer functions, etc. Round steering wheel, that looks good. No contrast stitch on this car, but you can get that if you want it. Soft materials on the dash and on the doors. Decent storage as well. Box between the seats with USB-C. Two big cup holders, little shelf here. And, oh, there's no shelf under the uh, center console actually, but decently sized door bins. Then we have a clock up here on the dashboard. That looks pretty cool. Dark headlining. All in all, it feels pretty chic and pretty luxurious in here. Here in the back of the Macan, uh, I have enough room sitting behind myself. I'm six foot. I've got decent headroom, half an inch, decent leg room, and toe room's fine. Of course, people rarely sit behind themselves in the real world, and kids, even teenagers, I think would be largely fine back here. Of course, Porsche can sell you the Cayenne, their larger SUV if you need more space. They also have a couple of wagons, the Panamera wagon and the Taycan Cross Turismo electric car. Pretty cool, I reckon, but a lot more expensive than a base Macan. We've got air vents, some temperature zone control back here, and also USB-C ports. Between the seats, an armrest with two cup holders, but no seat back pockets. 
uh, on these 14-way seats fitted up front. And of course, the dark headliner does mean it's a little bit sportier and darker back here, but we have big windows, making it easy for kids to see out. When it comes to fitting baby seats, the Macan's relatively compact size does come back to bite you a little bit because it's kind of hard to clamber in there, particularly fitting the forward-facing uh, toddler's seat. Just getting there to end up tucking the seat belt into the um, receiver, there's not a huge amount of room. So it had me thinking, gee, I wish I bought the Cayenne and this isn't even my car. But fitting the rearwards facing infant capsule was fine. There was no need to slide the front passenger seat any further forward, which is always good. So you'll be comfortable up front. The kids will be able to get into the back. In terms of fitting an adult into the center, that's a real pinch though, I reckon. And then one other thing you have to do is you do need to disconnect that sturdy rear cargo blind from the boot because it does get in the way of fitting the top tether here in Australia. The Macan is a mid-sized SUV, like an X3 or a Q5, but it isn't as big as some, and it actually looks quite compact when you're next to it. It isn't too tall, and that's one of the things I like about it. It's sort of got big hatchback vibes. In recent years, the Macan picked up this full-width uh, LED light bar, which does light up at night, looks really, really cool. And again, I like the volcano gray color on this vehicle. I'm not a huge gray car kind of guy, but this is a deep gray. Looks good, and when you have sustained bad weather like we've had for the last few weeks, uh, I guess it keeps it looking a little cleaner. Power tailgate button is right here beneath the rear windscreen wiper. That operates silently, gets out of the way, and reveals a 488 litres of space. We've got a sturdy cargo cover, a net off to one side, and then underneath this boot floor, you'll find a space saver spare wheel in this vehicle and a 12 volt socket next to the left hand side there. Now, we're gonna jump back to the office at this point for one second and see just how many soccer balls you can fit in the back of a Macan compared to other mid-size SUVs. And the answer to that is 41 below the window line. Why do we do this? Well, just saying 488 liters is fairly nebulous. What does that actually mean? This vehicle can fit 41 soccer balls within its useful space and that compares to 40 for the BMW iX3 or 42 for the Volvo XC60. So even though the Macan is fairly tightly sized, it's a compact vehicle, the boot is well packaged. That's what we learn from this measurement. So what's it gonna cost you to run a base model Porsche Macan? Well, it's not cheap because it's not actually particularly fuel efficient. Going for the two liter engine doesn't save you any fuel in reality compared to the 2.9 V6 in our testing. I've been running this as a daily for the last week and I've only managed about 12 and a half liters per 100 Ks. I think in my driver, the Macan S, I was doing 13. So it's gonna save you money to buy it as opposed to saving money on fuel consumption as you go. And of course it does require premium octane petrol, the Porsche Macan on all grades. What about insurance? In the last 12 months, the median budget direct customer has spent $1,368 to comprehensively insure a new Porsche Macan across all grades. Remember, everybody's situation varies and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account, like where you live, who drives the car, and their driving history. Servicing, there is no cap price servicing on Porsches. It's up to individual dealers. Our local dealer, Porsche Center Sydney South, they quoted me $4,830 to service a Macan base model across five years and 75,000 Ks. And the warranty on the car is just three years with unlimited kilometers. Pretty disappointing when a Q5 has a five year warranty. So base model Macan, does it drive like a Porsche? I think that is really the big question of this video because we've now had a look at the interior and it's very nice. It is a level above other um, luxury mid-size SUVs, including Cousin Q5 and vehicles like the GLC and X3. I think the interior is lovely and you can customize it just the way you want it. So I could get my beige leather and bell walnut if I wanted. You could get your red leather and carbon fiber. It's choose your own adventure, but there's no avoiding the driving dynamics. So what do we actually get with the base model? Well, we get an engine that we see a lot here on Chasing Cars, the Volkswagen Group EA888. 2-litre turbocharged petrol four-cylinder engine. Here, though, it makes 195 kilowatts of power and 400 newton metres of torque. It's hooked up to a seven-speed Porsche PDK gearbox, so they do their own transmission for this car. And there's a permanent four-wheel drive system that's rear-biased. So it isn't really fair to say this is a Chonkalicious pumped-up Golf R because the mechanical package is really quite different even though the engine is sourced from the same place. But it all starts with the fact that this is a two litre four pot, 
and it behaves a lot like other implementations of this exact same engine, which is to say that at low RPMs, it's quite doughy. It's chasing fuel efficiency, it's trying to stay off boost. But what that means is throttle response isn't that great until you start digging into the pedal a little bit harder, when it actually becomes lively, fizzy, it sounds good, and there's lots of mid-range torque in this car. So once you get it up on the boil, it's fun to drive, and the front end, of course, is very light, which is good for steering, good for dynamics, and exactly why Porsche have decided to build the Macan T off the four cylinder, the T usually being a more lightweight option. The four port is of course the lightest Macan and the Macan T should be quite interesting to drive as well. That being said, this is hardly a lightweight special. It's a near two ton midsize SUV. So I guess we just have to keep that in the back of our minds the whole time. But I think that after you drive a base Macan four cylinder and a Macan S or GTS 2.9 back to back, it just leaves you with no doubt about which one is the serious Porsche and which one is kind of engineered a little bit to get it to an 85 grand price point, which is what we're dealing with here. But after driving the four cylinder Macan back to back with a 2.9 litre Macan, so the S or the GTS, you are left in no doubt about which one is the more serious Porsche powertrain. I think you would say the four cylinder is serviceable, adequate and good to drive in that it really gives you the minimum possible weight over the front axle but there's just, it's a night and day difference between the response of the four cylinder and the V6. The 2.9 is one of the best Volkswagen group engines that they make. It really comes alive and makes this car feel so much stronger everywhere, but particularly that get up and go right off the line, which is why I think it's the preferred engine for this vehicle and why I think it's actually worth stepping up another $20,000 to buy the Macan S. I'm hyper aware that that's not a small amount of money and I wouldn't say it lightly. I say it because it really improves the vehicle and makes it justify that Porsche crest sitting right here on the steering wheel. You want the right engine for this vehicle. Otherwise, there are plenty of more affordable mid-size SUVs you could go for instead of this, ones with a longer warranty and a better equipment list. It's as simple as that. But what about the other attributes of the Macan? They are lovely. The ride and handling of this vehicle is easily the best among any midsize SUV. If you go to an Audi dealership and test drive a Q5, and then you go down to a Porsche Center and test drive a Macan, you'll see exactly what I mean. Um, it's been said that Porsche changed so much of the MLB platform for its SUVs that it would have been cheaper to start with a completely different chassis of their own, but that's just how it ended up turning out. It's an MLB based vehicle, but the steering in particular is totally different to that of a Q5 or a Volkswagen Touareg or even high-end stuff like a Lamborghini Urus. I think Porsche have really cracked the steering of this vehicle. It's mid-weighted, it's, the ratio is fantastic, and it actually gives more than a modicum of road feel back to the driver, which is great for an SUV. So it makes us a joy to drive every day. On this vehicle, we're running with the base suspension for a Macan, so it's just standard steel springs with passive dampers. So you can't change anything about the characteristics of the ride, which is fine because the ride is great. It's controlled, it's comfortable, it's compliant. It's definitely on the firm side, but I don't think that's a surprise. It's meant to be a Porsche. There's a sports car heritage to this brand. It's not meant to be boaty and floaty, and you definitely don't get boatiness and floatiness. However, you can option up adaptive dampers, that would improve the ride further, or you can go for adaptive air suspension on the Macan S, which I think is the way I would do it. The ride on that car is just top tier. But of course, if you look at the outside of this base Macan, we have 19 inch wheels and very, very chunky Michelin tires, and that helps to give a really nice insulating ride, even with good body control from the suspension. So I actually like the way this car has been specified it's quite sensible. It's also refined and quiet. The road noise is bearable. There's no vibration or harshness. It's lovely. And of course, there's an electric Macan coming soon, which will take refinement for this vehicle and probably pace to an even higher level. Shout out to the PDK as well. Really well tuned, intuitive, proactive downshifting, keeps the engine largely in its power band. There's just that doughiness at low RPM, which the 2.9 manages to avoid. However, on the safety front, you may be surprised to learn that the Macan has a poor suite of standard safety features from factory, and you have to option it up with basics 
like proper autonomous emergency braking and adaptive cruise control. Those two things come together in a package that this car doesn't have. You do get lane keep assist uh, and the mirrors are big and they have blind spot monitoring, but I think that in the year 2022, a family car needs to have AEB standard. And with the Volkswagen Group capable of producing an excellent high-speed AEB system that they fit onto cars like a Volkswagen Golf, it's just insanity that the Macan runs without it. I understand the purest spec argument, but I don't think it cuts it on a mid-size crossover. So that's a look at the base model Porsche Macan. In a lot of ways, the entry-level Macan still feels really sweet. The ride and handling is what we would expect of a crossover Porsche. Of course, it's not like a Cayman or a 911, but it is elevated beyond something like an Audi Q5 or a BMW X3 in terms of the steering feel and just how well this vehicle is damped, even on its entry-level suspension package. But the powertrain for me is what lets this vehicle down. The EA888 is one of our favorite two-liter engines, but when you're behind the wheel of a Porsche, you want an engine that's beyond a great two liter. You want a truly sparkling engine, and that's what you get when you pay 20 grand more for a Macan S with the 2.9. So I'd smash that piggy bank, I'd find the extra money. I know it's $20,000, it's not, not just nothing, but it really gets you a more cohesive package at the end of the day, I reckon. That's my opinion. Let me know yours down below the video. Hit subscribe while you're there and the notification bell. Don't forget about the links to build your own Macan, organize a test drive, download a features brochure. I've dropped them uh, in a pinned comment below the video. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.